Now that we have the intuition about what a singly linked list is, let's now try to implement it precisely in Java. And as I mentioned before, there will be two versions of the Java implementations I, I would like to talk about. Version number one, we want to focus more on the alg uh, algorithmic part of the various in uh, linked list uh, operations. So I'm going to talk about the list where each node will store a string value only. But later on, we're going to see how to make this design more general and more elegant by uh, allowing it to store any type as we uh, as we wish uh, using the Java generics. So that's something we'll uh, actually talk about later. But let's talk about version number one because at this point you are still uh, you are still the very beginner about the singly linked list. You definitely want to focus more on the algorithmic part. Let's not do that. And there will be two classes that we have to consider. Uh, let's now go over very quickly about the headers or signatures of each method and the attributes you will need. I can I managed to summarize the two classes in a single slide, and then I'll give you a little bit of idea about visualizing them at the runtime, and then we'll start talking about uh, how you can construct a list and also a chain of notes. That'll be the flow. Right, so the first clause that we have to consider will be uh, a note. And remember from the earlier intuition, uh, intuitive introduction, we talk about two attributes, like a two compartments uh, in a list note. So we got, let's say in this case, will be element of type string, as I said before. Later on, we'll make this type generic later. Okay? And we also got another attribute over here that will be the note. You can see it looks a little bit like a recursive. Well, actually, you're not wrong. Remember when we talked about recursion earlier, we say that a method will be recursive if the method calls itself, right? And now this is also not surprising over here. It's actually so uh, so called recursive data type. So in this case, you can see inside the class, we actually refer to itself. This is completely acceptable and it's actually quite common whenever you want to implement a so-called recursive data structure right that's something maybe i'll try to annotate again uh when i uh get to the visualization but it's definitely uh valid to really refer to the same class within itself it's called recursive data type okay or recursive data structure depending on the context you're using it all right so these are the two attributes that we have to focus on for each nodes in the list. Remember, each list is going to contain a, a connected chain of nodes, but this is only one of them. And what about the methods? The methods are rather straightforward. They are simply the, uh, the associated uh, accessor and mutators for these two attributes. Let's take a look. So we got, uh, oh, this is a constructor. So whenever we want to initialize a node, we have to uh, pass two arguments. So we're going to give the string elements value for example, if you are storing uh, string names, that should be a name. And this will be the reference to the next node, which may or, be, uh, may, or may not be known. But I'll show you uh, different ways to really construct a chain of nodes in just a moment. And we got get elements. That'll be the accessor for elements. Just return the elements. Remember, the principle is all the attributes in a single class should be private. And then we should really uh, create the associated uh, public accessors and mutators for them. That'll be the principle. Okay, so we got an accessor for elements. We got the mutator for elements, right? And also we got the accessor for the note, which means it returns a note, uh, the next reference over here. And also we got the mutator for the next note over here, right? I think we are not actually going to use uh, these two that often. Uh, well, typically, whenever you want to do algorithms on the linked list, I think for the basic ones, we are more going to touch these two about how to set the next node reference. Just keep that in mind, right? But definitely, I'm not saying that uh, you will never actually use these two methods. It de uh, depends on the algorithm you have to implement. I'm just saying for the basic ones, we're going to focus more on these two uh, methods and also this constructor, as we'll see. All right, that's it about the entirety of the uh, the node class. Pretty simple, but it can really give you very, very flexible and dynamic data structure at the runtime as we talk about intuitively. Okay, the second clause is the singly linked list. Notice that it's only a single node. And now we got a singly linked list class over here. Later on, we're going to talk about another class called doubly linked list, but just for later. Okay, you can see here we just got just a uh, head reference. For now, we are not going to uh, uh, include the, the, the tail reference, just the, the head, because I really want to speak about the running time of the link, uh, the singly linked list without the reference of the t uh, of the tail. Right, that's something I want to start with. So there's only a single attribute over here called the head, 
And also, we got a mutator for the set head. Implicitly, we have the default constructor for this class over here, meaning that all the attributes are going to have their default value null, right? That's something you learned from the earlier Java course. Whenever you don't really declare a constructor explicitly, it will exist by default, which will initialize all the attributes to their default values, right? If you got any doubts about why, uh, how this can work, you can reach out to me, but that's the basic I need to assume. All right, so we got the mutator over here for the head. We also got the, uh, uh, we should also get the accessor, but it's called another name. Well, I'll get there. So we can, you can think about these are, this is the only attribute that we have to worry about for the singly linked list uh, for now. And then we got a various method. One is the, uh, oh, that's a uh, basic one. You can even use Eclipse to generate that uh, routine method for you, but that's not something we're, we're gonna talk about. It's not that exciting, just to set the head. And also we can get a size, and also we can get to the tail, and which will return a node. And also we can add some elements storing the string, arguments E, and then, so that's why it's a mutator, right? We're just adding a new node to the front of the list. And also we want to get a node at a particular index. So we're assuming that the, in, the indices for linked list are uh, is simply consistent with uh, the indices for arrays, starting uh, from zero until the size minus one, right? So you can see the return type is also a node. And also we may just want to add a particular uh, new elements at index i over here. I'll talk about what this i can be. It's got an interesting condition. The i over here will have a different constraint than i over here. You would think they are the same, but turns out they are not, right? A little bit boundary case you have to watch out for. And so uh, if uh, we want to add a new string value, which will be somehow stored as a node into the list, right? So that's why it's also mutator. And also we may just want to remove the last element, uh, the last node in the list, in which case uh, it's simply uh, not going to return anything, just remove it, right? I would suggest before we actually go on to the implementation, you want to make sure you understand, number one, uh, the, these two classes about about the separation of concern. We got the node class, we got the singly linked, uh, singly linked list class, number one. Number two, for each one of them, make sure you understand about the attributes that are required to really uh, make the class work. And number three, you want to go over all the methods over here to make sure you understand why the return type should be the case. For example, why, why is it returning a node? And why is it returning a node? And why is it returning just void over here? And also about the arguments over here, right? You can see here for at first, uh, we simply just add, uh, we simply pass just a string value over here. Alternatively, what we could do is to pass a node over here instead. That also uh, is uh, one possibility, but we're not gonna do that. So in some way, this is more user-friendly. So whoever is calling the at first method over here, all they gotta do is to pass the string value like a name of a person, rather than constructing a node themselves as a caller and then pass the node reference over here. So in some way, it's a more user-friendly version of the method, right? That's something uh, if I, if, of course, if I do give you this alternative version in the test or exam, you should know how to do it, right? All right, so that's about some tips of studying uh, these two classes. First of all, make sure you understand them pr perfectly before you move on to uh, individual operation as we'll uh, walk through. One more thing to do quickly before I start talking about the individual methods. Let me talk about at a runtime, how would you visualize? Well, it would be very important for you to really trace the code as you design your algorithm. So how would you visualize uh, the node and also the singly linked list? Let me show to you, right? I'm, I'm definitely gonna do example, but let me just tell you the principle. Whenever you wanna visualize an object at a runtime for OOP, you have to see, number one, what uh, what the type of the object is, which which class was it instanti uh, instantiated from, number one. Number two, what attributes uh, do you wanna show for that particular object, right? Let me show you an example. Let's say in the case of the singly linked list over here, right, that's the class. So that means whenever you want to visualize an object of type singly linked list, you have to put the title of some box of singly linked list. I'll show to you. And also you have to show not necessarily all the attributes in this uh, in the class because sometimes maybe the class got maybe more than uh, dozens of uh, attributes. In that case, you don't need to really show all of them unless you, re you really want to, but otherwise you can only show the relevant ones. But for the singly linked list, the attribute that we always want to show will be just the head. And maybe later on we'll uh, introduce more attributes into this class, in which case you can show more, all right? So how would you, uh, how will we actually visualize uh, any singly linked list objects, right? 
the way to do it is it's going to be uh, the reference of the list object is going to be stored in some reference, right? Let's say the variable storing the list reference is called list over here. And then you're going to draw a box over here. And then the box should have a title of the class name simply linked list because whenever uh, if you got many kinds of objects at the runtime and if you, if you want to trace them at, uh, at, at once you have to make sure the, the, the title of the box can really distinguish between different kinds of uh, objects in this case i can simply put a short form i can put singly linked list that would be acceptable right and the only attributes i have right now is called a head right i just put a head over here right and so you can think about this part over here is supposed to store the reference or, like, or the address of some node objects over here, right? Maybe at a, maybe to begin with, it's simply pointing to null. In that case, you'll simply say it's pointing to null, right? It's a very straightforward way and a very uh, vivid way to actually see how things work at the runtime, right? So that's about simply linked list. And we're gonna follow the same principle for uh, the link node, each one of them. Let me just draw one of them. So you can see the node is over here, and also it, uh, it has two attributes. I think both are important. The first compartment, as I mentioned before, it will be the string value elements. And the second one will be just the next node over here, right? So you can what you can do is you can definitely say, maybe I have one node. Let's say the reference is simply N1. Maybe N1 is simply pointing to over here and objects over here and now you can see on the paper we got two kinds of objects already so i need to make sure the titles actually suggest exactly which kind of object it is like which class is uh, instantiated from in this case it would be a node objects so that's why i'll put node over here right how many attributes do, do i want to show i want to show both both the elements and also the next so what i would do is i'm going to divide over here and then i got two rows the number of rows corresponding to how many attributes you have. So it would be elements, I would say ELE, -E, just for short, and also the next. Let's say the next node is simply just pointing to null at the same uh, at the moment, right? We'll see example where we got a chain of nodes uh, later, right? So, and uh, what about the elements? It's a uh, story reference to string, maybe just over here. And over here, maybe I can say, maybe just Alan. Right? So that's how we visualize it now. And of course, since we know the for the singly linked list, its head can be a reference to some node objects. Since we know that, so it would be completely legitimate to say for the list over here, list.head, rather than pointing to null, it can be pointing to wherever M1 is pointing to. And this is also the reference aliasing that we spoke about, right? Let me just mention it again. It's so important. So we got reference aliasing. Okay, let me put it here. So here we got the list dot head is really pointing to the same object as N1, right? If you look at that over here, list dot head Oh, sorry. List.head is pointing to this particular object, and M1 is also pointing to the same object, right? So that's reference aliasing. Meaning that if you try to uh, change the contents of list.head, if you modify, for example, the elements over here through this particular path, it would be this uh, equally is, uh, effective as if you if you actually try to use uh, M1 the element as being set to maybe some other element, right? So it would be similar, all right? Okay, so that's about the uh, visualization. And definitely the chain of nodes can go on for as long as you like. That's something we'll see, All right? Let's now try to trace how we can construct a chain of nodes.